Welcome to the Blundstone fitting series. Today I'm going to give you the guidance you need to choose the best fitting pair of Blundstone boots for you. Before I get into the fitting, there's a couple of important details that differentiate Blundstone boots from other footwear. The first one being the sizing on the bottom of the Blundstone boot. This is Australian sizing. So the first item of business and the first thing we'll do is translate your US or Canadian size into Australian sizing. The rule of toe for women's sizing is to subtract three sizes from your US or Canadian size. For example, if you're a US women's eight, that would translate to an Australian five. For men, we subtract one size. If you're a men's 10, you'd be an Australian size nine. And for kids boots, we also subtract one size. This is a guideline for the best place to start your fitting experience. And it's not uncommon to go down two and a half sizes for women and for men, one to one and a half sizes. Something as simple as the socks you try your boots on with can impact your fit. Another important detail is half sizes. Half sizes provide you with a little bit more width or volume in the boot, not added length. The only difference between a size seven and a seven and a half Australian is the width not the length. A size seven and a half is wider than a size seven, but not longer. As I move into the fitting of a Blundstone boot, I'm gonna start with the classic series. This is a leather line series with a round toe. Now first, determine if we're a US men's 10, we'll go down one size for men's, which would be a nine Australian in the rustic brown classic series. Boot length is the key consideration when first trying on Blundstone boots. Our recommendation is to kick your toe to the front of the boot. Three knocks down should do it. Then put your finger behind your ankle in the back of the boot. Between the back of the heel and the back of the boot, there should be enough room to fit your finger comfortably. Not too much, otherwise you'll end up having too much heel lift in the boot, which would be uncomfortable. You want just enough space to get your finger in there. Another means of checking the length is to remove the footbed found in the boot. So set it down on the ground and align your foot on top of it. This will allow to see where your toe ends in the footbed. And it'll give you a pretty good indication of how much room you have at the end of the boot. It's very, very important that your toe is not touching the end of the boot. If it is, the boot is too short and the Blundstone boots will not stretch in length. A good rule of toe is to have a finger's width of space between your biggest toe and the end of the boot. Now that you've determined you have the right length, we'll check the fit for the rest of the boot, starting with the width. You want a fairly snug fit in the width and across the top of the boot, not tight. In checking this, if the width of your boot is pressing to the edges of the boot snugly, but comfortably, that's a good fit. Across the top of the boot, it's not unusual that there be a tiny bit of pressure on the instep or the area where the V stitching comes down. Once you start wearing your new Blundstone boots, they'll form a nice personalized fit to your feet. To reiterate, snug, but not tight and firm throughout the boot. To check for comfort, take your boots for a walk around your house or apartment and on a carpet if possible. Give it a good 15, 20 minutes. You might experience a little bit of heel lift in these boots and that's common. With an elastic sided boot, you'll find it does have that give to it as opposed to a, a lace up boot or a shoe that you'd be able to tighten or loosen to your desired level of tightness. With the heel lift, you don't wanna feel like you're coming out of the boot. If it's lifting a centimeter or two, that's perfectly normal. And once the sole gets worked in and becomes a little bit more pliable, you'll notice that the heel lift becomes a little less prominent. And you'll also get used to how the Chelsea boot fits. One thing I should mention is that you should always try on both boots. Most people have foot size differences, so it's important to size according to your largest foot. Socks, very important. Ensure you're fitting your new boots using socks that you'll most commonly wear with the boots. I know that may be challenging, but if you're buying boots, say, for a winter, for example, you may want to wear something that's a little bit thicker or warmer. Or if you're buying a boot for three seasons, you might want to be wearing it for multiple purposes and you want a thinner sock. So keep that in mind when you're trying on the boots because it does make a big difference in how the boot will fit. And all Blundstone boots come with an extra pair of footbeds in the box. If you find the boots are a little bit loose and you're not sure that the next size down is appropriate, you can always use the extra footbed to help take a little bit of space of the extra volume. You should be choosing the fit based on what feels most comfortable on your foot. This means ensuring that you have enough room in the length 
ensuring that you have a nice snug firm fit in the width and the uppers. So when it stretches, you have a nice personalized fit and that you don't have too much heel lift in the boot. So when trying on your boots for the first time, we have these handy durable pull tabs on the front and the back of the boots. They look great, but they're there for practical reasons, to make it easier to pull on your boots. We recommend using both the front and the back pull tabs, at least in the beginning. You might also want to give your boot a little bit of a stretch on the elastics in the front and back, and that's just to give it a bit of a work in. Then you can use either both pull tabs or just the back. Whatever works for you, pull them on. Now, you're good to go in the most comfortable boots you've ever pulled on. Happy booting and welcome to the Blundstone family.